The next session is special lecture two. This session will be chaired by Dr. Osomu Yokosuka. Dr. Yokosuka, please. Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Yokosuka from Chiba University. And uh, I'm going to chair the uh, special lecture to by Professor George Rao. Mm, I have some time, so I will introduce uh, Professor George Rao. Um, he graduated from Hong Kong University in 1987. He trained at the Stanford University in 1992. He further trained under Roger Williams at King's College in London in 1998. He promoted to full professor, full clinical professor, assistant dean and faculty of medicine, Hong Kong University in 2006. He founded and became chairman and consultant in gastroenterology and hepatology, humanity and health medical group, Hong Kong in 2009. Concurrently, he was appointed as a co-director and chair professor at the Fifth Medical Center of Chinese PLA General Hospital in Beijing, China. So he is flying between Beijing and Hong Kong um, frequently. Mm. And uh, he was um, elected as 19th president of APASU in 2008. He contributed to APASU as a senior steering committee member. And he is a chairman of APASU HBV reactivation guidelines and other guidelines. And recently, he is very working hard uh, for APASU uh, as a moderator of APASU webinar arranging many things. Mm. He published more than 300 original papers with a citation of 42,000 uh, and his H index is 95, surprisingly. Mm. He received many awards including Apostle Okuda Omata Distinguished Award. And today, he's going to talk about systemic therapy from hepatocellular carcinoma 2023 and beyond. He is a leading author of Himalaya study for SCC in 2022. Professor Lau, please. Thank you, Dr. Professor Yokosuku. May I have my slide? Uh, first of all, I would like to take this opportunity to thank uh, Professor Yuno and also Professor Omatis and my Japanese colleagues on organizing this very important single topic conference under the uh, title of APASO. Um, the topics I'm going to discuss with you in the next 30 minutes is systemic therapy for hepatocellular carcinoma. This is a very important topic and I think uh, especially for the young people and generations should spend some time on understanding how we can modify the management of hepatocellular carcinomas with systemic therapy. Uh, this shows the incidence of hepatocellular carcinomas according to the geographical regions and etiology. As you can see here, hepatocellular carcinoma is a very important health issue, a major cause of mortality especially in the Asia Pacific region. In countries like China, we account for around 40 to 45% of the world incidence of hepatocellular carcinomas, where most of them are related to chronic hepatitis B infections. In Japan, less so, but with hepatitis C infections. We now have antivirals to eradicate hepatitis C and also to control hepatitis B. But despite this, we are still seeing a lot of hepatocellular carcinoma. Being a practicing hepatologist in China, Hong Kong, Beijing, Shanghai, and Guangzhou, 
uh, we are uh, seeing lots of patients coming to our practice of uh, asking for clinical help because of the occurrence of hepatocellular carcinoma. Having said that, with all the, the measures to control the viral uh, etiology, and also so with uh, the existence of surveillance uh, uh, protocol to detect early liver cancer, we are still seeing an increasing incidence of primary hepatocellular carcinoma. And it is projected that hepatocellular carcinomas will increase to more than 900,000 by 2040. There are lots of reasons behind this, but suffice to say, we are going to see more and more hepatocellular carcinoma, and not less in 2023 and beyond. We have been managing hepatocellular carcinomas, especially those which is unresectable, not available for the local regional therapy as a physician for over 30 years. The management of hepatocellular carcinomas before 2008 falls into the disciplines of TAC, percutaneous ethno injections, resections, and sometimes liver transplantations. However, uh, uh, even up to near, uh, recently, most of the hepatocellular carcinomas, when they present to us, are at the late stage or advanced stage when they are unresectable. As you can see here, the rate of BCLC stage zero or stage A is very low. In, uh, in places like Taiwan, China, less than 10%. In Japan, it's better. But in Western countries, 10 to 30%. So our major the healthcare burdens is still unresectable hepatocellular carcinoma. This is the, uh, the figure shows again. Five, the five-year recurrence rate and metastasis rate, even after curative attempts by surgery, is up to 40 to 70%. And so I think this is also an area where we can use a systemic therapy in the future. Based on the understandings of the molecular pathway of hepatocellular carcinomas, and also the importance of the immune checkpoint inhibitors in the pathogenesis and controls of hepatocellular carcinomas, various targeted agents and immune checkpoint inhibitors has been made available and translated to the clinical practice after very stringent clinical trials and large scale phase three study. The first agents come uh, to make the made available to us is sorifamate based on the sharp studies and also the asia pacific studies published in the new england journal of medicines in 2008 and also lancet oncology by our asian colleagues professor chen from taiwan which shows that the use of systemic therapies in those patients with advanced hccs can improve the overall survival with the hazard ratios of overall 0 0.69 and 0 0.68 for asia pacific uh, uh, patients with hepatocellular carcinoma. So, so far, and recently, we have a few more studies which shows that by, based on phase three has become uh, available as a first line therapy. Uh, notably, it says the I'm Brave 150, which demonstrate the beneficial effects of atezo and beaver in improving the overall survivals for those patients with unresectable HCC as compared with sorifamate. The absolute survival gains for overall survivals is 5.8, and the hazard ratios uh, of for the overall survivals improvements is 0.66. In another studies, which were the uh, term that uh, reflect studies, which shows the land is not inferior to sorifamate. And therefore, based on these two studies, we now have until 2023, Atazo Beaver and also land made available as first line therapy for patients with unresectable HCC. On the other hand, we also have uh, various targeted therapies based on large scale phase three studies and become available as a second line therapy when the first line therapy failed. Namely, the study Resource, Celestial, and RISH2, which, that, which allows us to use Regal, Carbo, and Remusobate as a second line therapy for those patients who have failed uh, the first line therapy with an improvement with overall survival. The hazard ratios being 0 0.63, 0 0.76, and 0 0.69 respectively. 
Based on one of the recent uh, meta-analysis of eight randomized controlled trials with 3,739 hepatocellular carcinomas, uh, ranging from the periods of 2002 to 2020, a very important message was brought upon. It has been shown that immune checkpoint inhibitor therapy, but not TKI or NTVEGF therapies, are more effective in patients who has hepatocellular carcinomas related to viral hepatitis, especially hepatitis B. And I think this is a very important message because as differed from the Western world, most of the hepatocellular carcinomas in Asia Pacific region, especially China's, are related to hepatitis B. And therefore, uh, they should respond much better to immune checkpoint inhibitors as the rest of the world. So what do we have? from 2023, now it is in October and beyond. I would like to present to you some of our exciting data generated from the recent phase three global studies, the Himalaya studies sponsored by AstraZeneca. Me, myself was involved and the concept behind is related to the discoveries of the importance of immune checkpoint inhibitors for cancer therapy. This has led to the award of Nobel Prize to James Allison's and Dr. Honjo. This shows that the PDL1 and CTLA4 plays a very important part in the relaxing the immunity against cancer. And by unbreaking the T cell activity against the cancer, it will help those patients who suffered with uh, oncology problems. Anti-CTLA4 and NTPD1 combination therapy has been explored based on the rationale that CTLA-4 downregulates the initial priming of the T-cell response against the cancer cells. And the PD-1s uh, uh, the un unblock or the use of anti-PD-1 or PD-L1s can relax the T-cell effective functions within the tumor microenvironment. And therefore, by adding the two agents, we would like to see a change in the, the immunity against the cancer 